Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look at another aspect of astronomy that really, and again, will, will enable us to figure out distances to things that are really far away beyond our galaxy. And that's something that Hubble took, took, uh, took advantage of when he started studying astronomy, and he started doing research in astronomy, and when he began to realize something very, very profound in astronomy, it was based upon this concept right here. So let's understand this concept which is the radial velocity of stars, and in that aspect, the radial velocity of anything, nebulas, galaxies, you name it. So how do we know how fast things are traveling through space? Well, stars are moving in all different directions, nebulas are moving in all different directions, galaxies are moving in all different directions, and so there always will be a component of that velocity that's either directed towards us or directed away from us, and that's called the radial velocity. For example, let's say that the Earth is over here, and there's a star, and let's say the star is moving in this direction, right there, like that. Well, there will be what we call a radial component of that velocity, this way, and it will be a perpendicular component of that velocity, which is in this direction, like that. We can measure this velocity. We can measure velocities of galaxies or stars or whatever it may be in the linear direction away from us. That's called the radial direction. We cannot measure velocities perpendicular to our line of sight because there's no way for us to do that. But this we can measure. So this component right here is the component we're talking about right here. So if an object is moving towards us, we say the object is blue shifted. If an object is moving away from us, we say that the object is red shifted. What does that really mean? Well, first of all, let's find out how we can even tell that things are moving. Well, objects such as stars and galaxies are mostly made up of hydrogen. Also a lot of helium, some other elements, but hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. And hydrogen has a very specific spectrum due to the electron jumps from lower orbits to higher orbits and back to lower orbits. Hydrogen will absorb and emit photons of exact specific wavelengths. And for specific jumps where the electrons jump back down from the third level down to the second level, from the fourth level down to the second level, and from the fifth level down to the second level, it will emit a photon of very specific wavelength in the visible spectrum. One wavelength will have uh, one photon will have a wavelength of 656.3 nanometers to be exact, and that will, be, that will give off red light. We have another one at 486 nanometers that will give off bluish-green light, and one that will emit at 434 nanometers, which is purplish light, like violet light. Now, objects that move towards us or move away from us, those wavelengths will be shifted. If an object is moving away from us, it will be shifted to a higher frequency, therefore a lower wavelength. And so here you can see that when it's blue shifted, the, wa the waves, the, the photons will be shifted towards the right. That's a lower wavelength, so instead of maybe 656 nanometers, the wavelength will now be 654 nanometers. Shorter wavelength shifted towards the blue. Objects that are moving away from us, those frequencies will be shifted towards the longer wavelengths, and you can see that, for example, instead of 656 nanometers, we can measure that red light at 658 nanometers. Those are just examples depending upon how fast they may be moving. So, how we can then get the velocity from that is simply to throw it into this equation right here. The velocity in a radial direction of an object, either moving towards us or moving away from us, is equal to the speed of light times the ratio of the amount of the shift of the wavelength divided by the original wavelength. So here, let's say this would be the original wavelength. And let's say that we go from 656 to 658. So the delta shift is equal to 658 nanometers minus 656 nanometers, which is 2 nanometers. So the shift is 2 nanometers, and the original was 656. So when we take that ratio right here, we get 0 0.00305. If we multiply this times the speed of light, we should be able to get the speed of that star. So we multiply this times 300,000, and we get 915, so V equals 915 kilometers per second, which would mean that star is moving towards us. Oh, no, is it moving towards us? Let's see here. No, the wavelengths are getting longer. That means it's moving away from us. So the object is moving away from us at 915 kilometers per second. So we call that redshifted. Sometimes instead of writing the equation like this, they will write the equation like this. The velocity is equal to the speed of light times the z factor. The z is called the redshift because most objects in the universe are actually moving away from us. We then use that z as a redshift term. 
So we simply take this as the fraction between how much the wavelength has shifted divided by the total, divided by the original wavelength. And it doesn't matter which one we take. We can take this one or this one or any, any wavelength of any emission and see how much it had shifted and just come up with that ratio. That ratio will be the same no matter which one we take. The deltas will change, of course, for smaller original wavelengths, the delta will be smaller, but the ratio will always be the same, so they call that the redshift, and so the velocity is equal to the redshift times the speed of light, and so again, if you do it like this, you get the same number of 915 kilometers per second. If it's blue shifted and it's moving towards, towards us, again, you can then call it a blue shift, plug in the number, uh, you may want to call it a negative because then the number is getting smaller, which means then it's moving towards us rather than away from us, if, if uh, that makes it clearer for you. But that is a very important thing. Notice we are able to figure out the speed at which things are traveling towards us or away from us for any object in the universe, even for galaxies. And that's going to be the key to figure out how far it is to these galaxies. So knowing this, having learned this, comparing that to the HR diagram, and now comparing it to some other means of finding distances to stars and distances to galaxies, we're going to find incredible, clever ways of finding distances to faraway objects like galaxies in the universe, and that will uncover a very new chapter in astronomy for us. So if you're interested, stay tuned, I'll show you how we did that.